As leaders from across the world prepare to travel to Glasgow for the UN Climate Summit, here's a sobering statistic. In the east of England, we've seen the biggest rise in temperature in the country. Campaigners say it's another reason why next week's conference needs to make real progress. One of the most immediate signs of climate change is extreme weather. And as you've probably noticed, we've been getting a lot more of it recently. Here's Jules to tell us more. The 20th of July this year, and parts of the region see a summer heat wave interrupted by a deluge of giant hailstones. But here in the east, this kind of extreme weather is nothing new. On the 30th of September 1868, the Norwich Mercury reported on a severe thunder and hailstorm here at Kleinex the Sea on the North Norfolk coast. It left a trail of destruction, with the main church window destroyed in a moment. The hailstones were described as the most extraordinary size, with one measuring three inches in circumference. The Earth's climate has always changed. But the science now shows that the rapid man-made warming of our planet has increased the likelihood of certain extreme and freak weather. Here in the east, our climate is now one degree warmer than it was 30 years ago. And our region has seen the biggest rise in temperature out of the whole of the United Kingdom. For us, the summer of 2018 was the warmest since records began. And the following year saw the highest temperature on record in the UK. 38.7 degrees Celsius, so nearly 102 degrees Fahrenheit, was recorded at Cambridge University Botanic Garden. But what about 2018's infamous beast from the east, with its heavy snow and sub-zero temperatures? Does it disprove global warming? Well, despite human-induced climate change, we will still have natural extremes and variations in our weather. And if it wasn't for global warming, some scientists believe the beast could have been even colder. And then there's the impact of climate change on rainfall here in the east. And that's not straightforward. We've seen a slight increase in rainfall, but not by much on an annual scale. But what is more interesting is when you delve into the monthly changes. Now, February used to be our driest month of the year, but that's not the case anymore. It's become a lot wetter over the last 30 years, along with August and October. But at the same time, March and April, which are already dry, they've become even drier. And so we're now seeing these bigger swings between wet Februarys and dry springs. But we're still breaking rainfall records. Yeah, and even earlier on this year, we saw an awful lot of rain falling from these slow-moving summer thunderstorms, such as in Brettonham in mid-Suffolk. Uh, they recorded over 180 millimetres of rain in just under two hours, and that would technically challenge some UK rainfall records. But what does the future hold if we don't limit the warming of the planet? Professor Tim Osborne is closely involved in the latest climate report by the United Nations. We will see more extreme weather here in the east. We'll see more intense heavy rainfall. We'll see drier summers, um, more very hot days. In terms of windstorms, probably no change in windstorms. Um, but in terms of the storm surges that they drive, the storm surge will be on top of a higher background sea level rise, and therefore the peak surge could increase too. And so the message from the world of science is clear. If we don't protect our planet, there will be more extreme weather and all the damaging consequences that come with it. Julie Ranger, BBC Look East.